This is a review of the formulas and the equations that you'll need to know for chapter 6. So when you're given the y-intercept and the slope, the equation that you're going to use is slope-intercept form. which looks like y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. On the table, the y-intercept is where x equals 0. So let's say your table goes like this, and let's say the y-intercept is 2. Oops, 12, sorry. Okay, so our y-intercept is 2, and then the slope is the rise over the run, or the change in x over the, I'm sorry, the change in y over the change in x. So our slope is plus 2 on the y side, plus 1 on the x side, so our slope would be 2 over 1, which is 2, and our y-intercept would also be 2. So then when I graph that, I would start on the y-axis at 0, 2, and then I could use the slope to graph the next point. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 1. I can't go up another 2, but I could go back to make the point that came before the y-intercept. So that means I'm going to go down 2 and back 1, and then make your line. And then if I were to write the equation for this um, situation, since the slope is 2, I would say y equals 2x plus 2 because that's the y-intercept. Next example, if you are given a point and the slope, you're going to use point-slope form. So that looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is still the slope, and then x1 comma y1 is the point. <clears throat> So let's say we are given a point of 4, 7, and a slope of 1 third. So I'm going to go up 1 on the y side for every 3 that I go over on the x side. So for the x side, I have to count by 3. So 4, 7, 11. 14, etc. And then on the y side, I'm going to go up by 1. So 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Okay, you could work backwards to find your y intercept. So if I go back 3, that would give me 1. And if I go back 1 here, that would give me 6. So my y intercept is going to be a decimal because if I go back another 3, that's going to cross. Um, not exactly at a point, but I could start graphing this. So my first point is 1. Okay, this isn't going to fit on the graph, but that's okay. So I would go over to 1 and up to 6, and then over to 4 and up to 7. So my graph is going to look something like this. I could go back um, and find the point that came before this first one. So if I go um, down 1 and back 3, my other point would be right here. So this is a little bit off the graph, sorry about that. So then my equation would be y minus, since this was my point for 7 to start with, y minus 7 equals 1 third, and then in parentheses x minus 4. <clears throat> Alright, next example, if we are given two points, you're also going to use point-slope form to start with, which is the same as it is above, but you need to find the slope first. And then pick one point to plug in. Okay. 
All right, so let's say we are given the points. Uh, negative 2, 3, and Two, six. So I'm going to put those into the table. So negative two, three, and then two, six. So the first thing I need to do is find the slope. So the change in y is plus three, and the change in x is plus four. So my slope is three fourths. So when I put that into the equation, I'm just going to pick one of the two points. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to pick the negative one so I can show you what happens with that when you put it into the equation. So y minus 3 equals 3 fourths, and then in parentheses, x minus negative 2 is the same thing as x plus 2. So I'm going to write x plus 2 because it's more simplified. And then to graph it, I'm literally just going to graph these two points. So negative 2, 3. And then positive 2, 6. Again, that goes off the graph. That's okay. And then make your line. <clears throat> Last one. If you are given the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you are most likely going to start in standard form, which is ax plus by equals c. This was the very first type of equation that we learned how to do in this chapter. I called it a combination problem. So that was where there was no um, there was no independent or dependent variable. Either one could have been the x or the y. So just to remind you, the x-intercept is where y equals 0, and the y-intercept is where x equals 0. So the y-intercept, let's say, is 0, 1, and the x-intercept, let's say, is... negative 4, 0. So when I graph this, I would go up to 1 on the x, the y-axis and to negative 4 on the x-axis and connect my two points. So in standard form, what this would look like is Um, we don't need to know the slope because we're just putting it in to standard form. So um, to actually write this in standard form, we do need to know what C is. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but just remember that these are the types of problems where there is no independent or dependent variable. You just have um, an X value and a Y value and you get to pick. So that's where there's no time involved. So I think a pretty common problem that you saw in your homework was you buy a certain number of hot dogs and a certain number of hot dog buns. In that case, it doesn't matter which way you set up the X and the Y on your graph.